But I'm Miss Rook, Kent Sixth Form, and I would like to hand over to Mr. Bang, who is there in the team. Hello, so lovely to be back with you. I have the privilege of being many of the, uh, the tutor to many of the sons and daughters in this wonderful year group and now to be the head of year. It is my privilege to be working with them. And I'm really excited for what this year holds. And I think, albeit that there is a number of external forces and some anxiety around what this year might look like, let's not lose sight that this is a wonderful year for each one of those sons and daughters. Now, I don't know about you over the summer, but I subscribed to Disney Plus and I was very excited when I heard that uh, Hamilton was going to be available for us to watch. And as a big musical theatre fan, I thoroughly looked forward to that Friday evening where I watched it. And there was a lyric that stayed with me and I think is so apt for the students this year. I am the one thing in life I can control. I am inimitable. I am an original. And I hope from tonight's presentation from Miss Rick and myself, we will be so clear about how your son and daughter will be able to make the choices that determine their outcomes. And that they are also inimitable. No one can imitate what they are about to do, particularly because of the current situation, but also that they are all choosing their own destinations and 18 plus options. And it's our pledge to you that we're going to support them to achieve those options in the best way that we can. And we think that the ways that we've restructured the sixth form and that we've put a, a good safety net in this year, they will be able to do that. So there was great cause for celebration this summer when our students finally got their A-level results. And many of them went off to some fantastic destinations up and down the country. And we hope very much that the same will happen for your children next August as well. Some of the destinations listed here, King's College, Exeter, Durham University. So as you can see, they're north and south and east and west <laughs> of the country. But in addition to university places, we're really proud to uh, have up there one of the most competitive apprenticeships that students can get, the Ernest and Young Apprenticeship, um, which one of our students uh, succeeded in getting as competitive as Oxford or Cambridge to get really. So a big well done to that young man. So what lies ahead for your children in the year ahead? Well, we have only got one year left. And really what we're looking at is for students to really build upon the foundations that they put in last year to deepen their knowledge uh, of their subjects so that they're ready for the challenges ahead. It's going to be about making good choices moving forward and building upon the good choices that hopefully they have made so far. We were really, really impressed with their summer assessments that they did. And I genuinely feel that actually the majority of our students actually aren't any worse off as a result of the time that we've had apart. I genuinely think that many of them took that challenge and ran with it and are actually in a really good place following what could have been a disastrous period of time for them. So looking at what lies ahead, really, some of them are going to be learning to drive and have done maybe the driving test today. I look forward to hearing from that student how you got on. Um, you might also fall in love or fall out of love. You might have a job. It's about balancing the demands of your studies against those jobs this year. It's absolutely crucial to get that time management correct. And the bottom left hand picture on the slide is some, uh, some students, some ex students who were award winners last year following their A-level results. Um, and it's that sort of student, that sort of mentality that we want you to develop over the course of the year. We're going to say a little bit more about the A-level mindset in, uh, later on. We've got a fantastic tutor team at the disposal of your sons and daughters. And you can see on the slide here that their email addresses are available to you. This PowerPoint will be uploaded uh, by Monday, so you'll be able to copy and paste them, but hopefully uh, your students, uh, sorry, your sons and daughters have come home talking about how happy they are with their tutors. All of them are experienced in the UCAS process and have been involved in applying for a wide range of jobs, both within the education sector and beyond. So we really feel that they are best equipped to guide your sons and daughters through their 18 plus options. I also just want to highlight what I call the facilitating team or the wider pastoral team and myself as the head of year 13, Miss Rook who oversees the sixth form and then the fantastic Mrs. Will Stanley who's on hand to support some of our students on a more personal basis as well as Mr. Sai who oversees our attendance options 
um, that I'm Mr. Rook will talk about later. Uh, in addition, uh, obviously a crucial part of your child's success this year is going to be working with their subject teachers and keeping those communication pathways clear is absolutely uh, essential. So students must use Teams to contact their teachers or email and similarly you as parents should be able to feel that you can contact the teachers as well wherever you have got any concerns. So once again these email addresses will be available on this PowerPoint on Monday. It's essential that we work together and that's what we're talking about really in the last two slides. Um, it probably feels like uh, 10 minutes ago that your children were rather small like the little girl on this stepping stone crossing um, a river and here you can see the mother holding the child's hand carefully as she kind of navigates that potentially dangerous journey across the river and similarly uh, being an A-level student in year 13 is rather the same as crossing a river on stepping stones and whilst they might seem like they don't need you so much anymore, in many ways they're much more independent than they were when they were three or four years old and crossing a bridge like this one, they need you more than ever. And actually it's, it's these fundamental decisions that they're gonna make about life-changing decisions, about whether to go to uni or apply for apprenticeships. They need you to help guide them through these decisions and make the right choices with regards to things like how many hours should I be working or, you know, am I working hard enough or am I working too hard? And they need you more than ever to guide them through this year 13. So please, if you have any concerns about your child, please get in touch with the child's tutor, as um, Mr. Bags already said, or the wider team. I'd also like to um, draw your attention to the A-level mindset that we have spoken to students about throughout the induction. Now, every year on A-level results day, we will look at the results and every year there is a few students that we just think, wow, you really nailed these A-levels, you really did it. It's not always a straight trajectory between those who did well at GCSEs to those doing well at A-levels because it's so much about the mindset that people go into their A-levels with. If you go into your A-levels with the right mindset, you can have a set of relatively mediocre GCSE results and come out with some outstanding A-level results. And you can also have the occasional blip where a student has outstanding GCSE results that actually doesn't go on to perform quite as well as you might imagine. And it's all to do with this A-level mindset. Do they have a clear vision of where these qualifications are taking them? Do they know um, how much effort they need to put in to get the grades they require? Have they got the systems and, uh, that support that? Are they well organised in their approach to their learning? How are they putting in the amount of practice that's needed? So to do linear A-levels, that's exams at the end of a two-year course, takes a lot of organisation and practice to be able to do well at those exams at the end of two years. And lastly, have they got that growth mindset? Have they got a good attitude that when they get a knockback, they don't get the grade perhaps they thought that they were going to get? Do they brush themselves up, pick themselves up and think about where were the gaps in my knowledge to enable them to plug those gaps and move on? And that's what your child needs to have. They need to have the VESPA, as it's called, mindset. So if you would like to, you could talk to your child about their, uh, their mindset. They've done an assessment on day one and they might want to talk to you about the areas that they find more challenging so that you can help support them at home. An analogy that I find really useful that comes out of the book uh, that we're using as our core thinking here is the buoyancy analogy. Uh, the idea of the boy in the sea and how it's knocked around by the waves and uh, sometimes it sort of goes from one side to the other quite gently and the knock's not that large. But other times it feels as if it fully submerges and comes back around to the top. And I think that's so useful for us to remember as we work with these young people that for them, some of the knocks that they're going to take is that whole rotation through the base of the sea back up again. And just to talk with them and, and explain through that and bring them back to a place where they feel that they can move on and address where they need to focus their vision is so important as well. The year ahead has got a number of key deadlines and again this slide outlines each one of them. In October we're going to re release the first academic report that then will be used by the tutors to infer um, how the students are doing. 
It's also the time that we'll need you to pay for the UCAS applications that we're supporting. Uh, the information for that is on the UCAS website. In November, we normally have a tutor evening, but due to the current COVID guidelines, we're having to rethink that slightly. So we've penciled in what we call tutor week, and there'll be an opportunity for you and the parents and the tutors to have a one-to-one -one conversation about your child's progress. We're just going to release more details nearer to the time about how to book appointments on that. Come December, we've got our internal UCAS deadline. One of my visions for this year is that all students have secured their UCAS deadline or have built their CV and a base cover letter before the Christmas holidays. This means that when they come back in January, they can fully focus on their mocks and not be worried about last minute scurrying together the final details. After the Christmas holidays and into the new year, we'll have a set of internal exams, which we will be using as our formal ones. There is then also the formal UCAS deadline nationally. We'll also again produce another report after the locks, and then we are hoping to hold a parents evening in person at that point. Again, details for that will be released nearer the time. Come March, if you are looking, or your son or daughter is looking to go to university, student finance applications open. We encourage people to do them in a timely manner to secure the funding for their university study. In April, the final report comes out, and then the students are ready to enter the final stages of their study. Any non-examined assessment or coursework that has to be completed will have its deadline in that time. Offers on UCAS will have been made and hopefully we will have all students happily accepting a firm and a conditional offer. Now, one of the questions that many students have asked in the initial first few days back is, what is happening with our exams? And we want to be upfront and honest with you at this point. We do not have a definitive answer as such. If there is no change at all by the government or the Department for Education, the exams will start in May. However, there is uh, insight that they may be pushing back the exams and they may run through June and July as well. So we'll just keep that time frame in our mind from that May to July, that that is when the examinations will be held. So the Bishop 1646, it's really um, an important thing to, for students to understand what we are expecting of them. We want the sixth form to be a happy and vibrant place, but for that to be the case, everybody has got to play by the rules. We want students to make a positive contribution to their learning and to the environment that's around them. They need to be great model, role models for other students as they are walking around the school and observing obviously the new regulations that we have. That stretches to their dress code, uh, also their behaviour and their attitude. We expect students to make sure that they attend all registered lessons, that they're well equipped for those lessons and that they contribute positively and engage in those lessons. We also expect them to demonstrate their independence by communicating, and we've already mentioned this, about making sure that they're using Teams and emails but also that they're visiting and checking in every day with Show My Homework. Now, again, the COVID restrictions are bringing some changes to how the school can operate. Uh, there's already been some talk by the students about when they come in and out of school and that all study periods are now registered. Tomorrow, your sons and daughters will receive their final timetable with their expected study periods on. In the morning, they need to be ready and organised for their day coming to school. That is knowing exactly when they are due to come in, what lessons, the study periods they have, and having the appropriate equipment for that work. I want to stipulate at this point that we cannot hand out equipment, so they need to have their own. Show My Homework has got all the deadlines on for their independent learning tasks, and teachers are using Teams for online submission and online marking, and the students can see their timetables from the inside of them. So our hope is that when they're in school, it is quite a dedicated time to study. When they then go home, hopefully, based on the principles of last year, they've got a dedicated workspace that they can do their work. Hopefully some form of computer that they'll be able to access online resources or their phone, and that they will be able to dedicate that right time to doing their school work. On the PowerPoint, if you are still unsure about how to access Show My Homework, there are guidelines here to how you can see Show My Homework and have that proactive conversation with your sons and daughters about what work is still due. Hopefully, we won't be having those conversations throughout this year as students are now able to manage their deadlines and their workloads. 
But just in case you are someone that really wants the best, I do encourage you to sign up to show my homework and have that check in. Linking to that, attendance and punctuality. We do expect students to be in every single lesson. Uh, and not just contact lessons, it's these registered study periods as well. They need to be dedicating enough time to their studies to enable them to get the grades they're, they're capable of doing, of getting, sorry. If you have a look at the uh, chart on the right hand side of the screen, you can see there the approximate grades that uh, it might be lowered if your child does begin to miss school. So just a 10% reduction in a child's attendance can lead to a drop of one grade and a 20% reduction, two grades. Now that two grades could hit one A level uh, and really reduce one subject, or it could hit two subjects and two subjects going down by one. Now, this obviously is going to impact significantly on your child's ability to be able to meet their uh, offer grades that they may be given from either an apprenticeship or universities. And we do know from what we're hearing that numbers for applying to UCAS this next year are going to be increased on the basis of international students coming to uh, apply to universities. And certainly with what the student who uh, got the Ernest and Young apprenticeship, his was in the balance at one point as well because he had to get certain grades from certain subjects to get that. Now, you, your child needs to be in every single lesson to ensure that they're getting as much help and guidance from their teachers to help them get through these last few terms before their exams. So please, please make sure that you're encouraging your child to be in every single day for every single lesson and to be punctual. In terms of common attendance questions, I've outlined some uh, here. So they must attend all scheduled lessons. That includes, as I said, the timetabled study sessions. It includes their lessons, their enrichment lessons as well. And if they are um, coming in for period one, they are expected to be here for morning registration also. In terms of late passes and early passes, Mr. Bag has been through every single timetable lovingly and he has selected where the students should have a late pass or an early pass. And that is uh, depicted on the timetable as just a, a, an empty slot. So if there's an empty slot on, slot on the timetable on Insight, it means that, that student can come in late. If it says it's a registered study period, they must come in for that registered study period. If they're going home early because they've got a blank slot on their uh, timetable, they must remember to sign out at the back study where there are some sheets up where they simply write the time they've gone and they write home. Uh, rather similarly to last year, there's no change in the blue and the yellow slips should you have um, a need to go home suddenly during the school day. So that's a yellow slip that students need to give advance notice to their teachers. Or if you've got advance notice of an appointment that absolutely couldn't take place at any other time but during the school day, that, that you give your teachers advance notice that you are going to be absent from that lesson, you receive the work and then you drop the slip to Mrs Desai so she can record it on your um, on your attendance record. Um, any absences or illness please call Mrs Desai on the telephone number listed here. Um, remember and I've already alluded to, to it about part-time jobs it's a real balancing act making sure that you you get the right balance between independence and having a job and also um, getting your work done for your A-levels. So we would recommend eight hours maximum uh, to enable you to have enough time. Uh, as I've already said, medical appointments, driving lessons, please outside of school time wherever possible. So what's new for 2020 and 2021? Well, the head boy girl and the girl roles are now available for students. And there'll be information coming out this week about how they apply to be pivotal leaders in student voice in our school. We've had fantastic head boys and head girls who have introduced wonderful schemes into the school that have really developed our community. One of the most recent head girls introduced a reading scheme to help improve literacy in our Key Stage 3 cohort, a scheme that she's left behind a legacy that still runs to this day. So if your son or daughter is interested in that and has ideas on how to improve Bishop Wand and wants to leave such a legacy, please do get them to apply.
We've got Inside Mobile as well, a fantastic app that they can use on their phones to see their timetables, their attendance figures, and even their behaviour reports. See the teachers that are praising them and recognising them for the wonderful work that they're doing, as well as noticing patterns in maybe some of their misdemeanours, and then helping them to address and coach through to not cause them. I'll come on to these now, but the restructured tutorial schedule and enrichment programme is something that I've brought into the sixth one that I'm really excited to be sharing. And I just want to say the application for the bursary is now open. However, the form has had to be changed from a paper form to a digital form. So we're just going to ask if people could wait until Monday if they would like to apply for it, where hopefully the form will be finalised. If you've got any questions about that, please email Ms. Work or myself and we'll happily go through those with you. Due to the COVID measures, we've changed the structure of the school day and we've moved form time from the start of the day to the finish of the day. Listening to student feedback, they were hypothesising that maybe form time could be structured in a better, more efficient manner. Taking that feedback on board, Ms Rick and myself have worked together to trial a new model for this year. So now all students only attend two form times after school. Wednesday form time is known as Wednesday briefing, an opportunity for me to speak to the entire school and members of the SLT as well. That's where a pre-recorded message goes out to the students in their form groups with their tutors and an opportunity to reflect on that A-level mindset principle as well as our core Christian values. We've then also got the agreed group tutorial that occurs on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday or Friday and the tutors and the students have agreed their own groups. Students are expected to turn up to that session to have a one-to-one -one or a small group discussion with their tutors. This is to better reflect the academic setting of group tutorials and also the professional setting of a line management meeting. My hope is that if this is successful and we find it productive, we can continue this throughout the year. But it depends on if students buy into this and continue having the effect of attendance that we currently have. Secondly, we've restructured encryption, uh, enrichment sorry, to now be called preparation for working life. So in the first term, we are focusing on the UCAS application process and providing apprenticeship support by developing CVs and cover letters. But then for the remainder of the year, I want to focus on those wider life skills sessions and preparing them for university. Addressing what seems to be a common theme of money management, taxes, understanding the working world, as well as providing other ideas such as the healthy eating, how to cook and budget in the university or an independent lifestyle, and addressing some more complex themes such as consent, healthy relationships, and substance abuse, and those themes that really students of this age group need to be aware of so that when they go into their working life, they are prepared for what eventualities might appear. Ms. Rich, going to chat a little bit about D of E. So students will have the opportunity uh, to be involved in the DOB Gold. Obviously more information um, from either Mr Leonard or Mr Worrell, but um, we've had some assurances that there will be something happening in the next year with regards to the DOB Gold, despite obviously COVID-19 restrictions. So, well not despite, but uh, responding to that. The sixth form dress code, everyone's favourite topic on some days, but it is clearly listed here and we ask students to abide by this. We've given them some breathing time to sort out the shoes and the skirts and the trousers and the tops that are not appropriate. So please do follow this. I just want to highlight two commonly occurring contravenings of the dress code here. In footwear, we have said smart leather or leather type shoes or ankle boots. There is a pair of Nike shoes that are leather made they are not acceptable because they're too near to trainers, so we've asked that students don't wear them. Secondly, we've seen the emergence of sweatshirts and hoodies start appearing in the sixth one. We will ask students to remove those and to take them and leave them at home. We don't deem them as professional workwear. A v-neck jumper would be a suitable alternative if they do feel cold, albeit I didn't feel very cold today in the current heat wave. No. Um, Insight is an app that both parents and students can download. We've already mentioned it, so it's already gone through what you can access on Insight. If there are any issues that you have with regards to accessing your Insight portal, either as a student or as a parent, then please get in touch with Mr Griffiths who will be able to resolve your issues. 
We do need to highlight plagiarism at this point. Sadly, with the uh, emergence of the non-examined assessment in the new A-levels, as has plagiarism in those. And we do not want to have students having the awkward conversations of whether they have plagiarised their piece of work or not. We are proud of the work that our staff and students do, and particularly our professional integrity around what we create. So what we are endeavouring to do is teach students how to avoid plagiarism in what they do. Last year we paid for a piece of software called Turnitin and we went through a series of staff training and student training to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is when a student takes someone else's work and passes it off as their own. The work could come from the internet, a book, another student's coursework, course handouts and teaching resources. It doesn't matter where it came from, it's what they do with it that can make it plagiarism. Sadly, under some guidelines for the non examined assessment, if work is found to be plagiarised, that student is disqualified from the A level. Thus, we want to work very hard to ensure that students are not being involved with that. How do we get around that? The process of referencing. And all A level teachers, when they set a piece of work, go through how to reference and how to correctly identify when it's a piece of information that has been lifted from another document. I'll leave those with departments as to how they teach referencing as styles vary from department to department. But please, when you're having conversations with your sons and daughters about their coursework, please do ask, have they correctly referenced? Have they built their bibliography? Because these are important and paramount in ensuring a successful submission of their work. There are some suggestions on this slide about how to avoid plagiarism if it's something that you are not so familiar with. Another crucial part of the communication jigsaw puzzle is parent mail. Both myself and Mr Bagg will be depending on parent mail to stay in touch with you uh, about various um, events or, um, occur, uh, or things throughout the school year. For example, the tutor evening in November. We would want to update you via parent mail. If you've had any issue with your parent mail, uh, please once again be in touch with Mr Griffiths at bishopwand.sorry.sch.uk and he will be able to help you. This brings us to the end of your presentation and thank you so much for waiting and listening through it all. Again, I just want to remind the two key concepts. These children are original and inimitable. We're aware of the conditions and we pledge to you. We are working our hardest to secure those outcomes. And also we want to work so closely with you. Children have two main educators in their lives, the parents and the teachers. I hope we can continue to build a good parental relationship with you as we guide our students through. I'd like to end with a prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for each and every one of the students in this new group. We thank you that they are created and that they are growing up to be wonderful young men and women. And Lord, we ask as we go through this year, with the hurdles to jump and with the straights to run, that you may guide us and you may help us, that we may work closely together to ensure that these students have the best outcomes available. And we ask this all in your name. Amen. So have we had any questions at all, Mr Dixon? Uh, a couple of questions come through, Mr Rook. Uh, first question is, when will the A-level exam dates for next year, 2021, be confirmed? As already alluded to by Mr Bagg, as soon as we know anything, you will be the first to know. Well, students actually and you collectively will be the first to know. But certainly um, we haven't been told or had anything confirmed yet with regards to the exam dates. Um, October half term is when the DfE are going to release a piece of documentation about the adaptations to GCC and A-level exam results. So that may be the earliest that we hear, but as I want to reassure as Rick said, uh, we will let you know as soon as we can. Will you be laying on extra lessons after school to support the learning, the support students to fill the gaps in their learning following the school closures? Part of the restructuring of the timetable enables us to offer a period to six slot, which is going to be available for recovery and catch up curriculum. We made the conscious decision at the start of the year not to implement any additional sessions because we wanted to ensure that anxiety and angst was um, dealt with and addressed so that students felt comfortable coming back into the school. I believe in time we will begin to start talking with you about that recovery catch-up curriculum 
and what is being offered. Yeah, we're just in the process at the moment of identifying where, if any, there are gaps. Um, and then we will once again be in touch with you to create that programme. But just to reassure you, um, all indicators from the exams they did just before the summer were really, really positive, and that's testament to the efforts that parents put in to ensuring that students had workstations, good habits um, during that lockdown phase. Uh, and thank you to everything you did because those exams, those exam results were broadly speaking really very encouraging. So uh, please don't panic. We feel that we are in control of this and we would like to pass on some of that confidence to you. But where there are gaps, where we have got concerns, obviously we will be in touch with regards to that catch up curriculum, those period sixes. And if you would like to have an input and you feel your son or daughter in particular is getting stressed about one particular topic and you think that might have passed us by, please be in touch with their teacher to let them know that you feel that they're concerned. And that way, you know, you've done everything you can to, um, to plug that gap uh, as well. Will there be any exams before the UCAS deadlines? In terms of exams, there will be um, no formal kind of like we're taking a week off because obviously we need to absolutely have every piece of contact time that we can. The first set of exams that students will do will be in the January, but that doesn't mean to say that there won't be internal kind of assessments subject to subject in the next few weeks or indeed on the run up to the first report. So um, we will be using a collection of evidence to come up with their UCAS predicted grades. It will be the most recent assessments that we've got, but alongside that, we will also obviously look at all of the data that we've got for them from their year 12, alongside what their target grades might well be, um, to enable us to come up with our best uh, prediction for them. Uh, and that all, always will be our a balance between being uh, as positive as we can, uh, but obviously that alongside what evidence we've got as well. So what your child needs to do is to have those conversations, those open and honest conversations with their teachers to kind of establish what currency they've got to play with when it, when it comes to choosing their universities. So are they playing with the potential kind of a BBC, in which case you know what kind of universities or what kind of uh, courses to, to look at. So please encourage your child to have those conversations with each of their teachers. Anything you'd like to add, sir? No, I think that's, that's absolutely apt. Uh, just a query about predicted grades and where they're coming from. Is there a bit of information on that, please? So that's the same as the UCAS grades. That's exactly what I've just said. So the UCAS grades come from a collection of pieces of evidence, their target grade, but also all assessment grades that we've had to them for them to date. So some people were rather worried that their summer exam was going to be solely the uh, UCAS grade. It won't be the case. Uh, any assessments that you do in the next half term collectively with all of the assessment grades that we've got for you for last year will be our indicators of what we might put down as your UCAS predicted grade. So um, if you have those conversations with teachers, that's how you're going to find out what they're going to predict you on their reference. Right, and the last question here is that the chemistry and the psychology contacts were, were not on the previous slide. Can we um, ensure they're updated before this? We'll ensure they're updated. Um, chemistry this year is Mr Dixon, um, who was very kindly taken over from Miss Hayter. And psychology uh, is Miss Thomas. Thomas now, um, who is in the in psychology. That's is all that the questions everything? now. All questions. Thank you very much for coming and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye bye.